season for making milkweed pod Santa ornaments and planting some milkweed seeds while you're at it. I'm going to show you how to take these really lovely pods and turn them into an ornament that any nature lover will enjoy. Of course, you'll need some milkweed pods. I am using common milkweed because that's what grows here, but any milkweed that has a big pod like this will work just fine. You'll want to make sure that your pods are mature and brown and dry, most importantly, and you can use a clipper to cut them off, which is probably a little bit easier, um, or you can just rip them off with your hands, but be careful that you don't rip the stem too um, aggressively from where it attaches to the pod. Collect as many as you think you need, plus a few extras. I always find that once I get them in the house and start looking at them, that there's always a few that just aren't quite the right shape for what I want. I'd also recommend cleaning out any of the seeds and silks before you bring them in. The first step to prepare them for painting is to remove the stems, and you have to be really careful here. It is very easy to rip the whole top of the pot off when you're trying to get the stem off. That one came off just perfectly beautifully. Um, sometimes I kind of stabilize the top of the pod so I don't rip it right off, and if you do rip one, well, hopefully you have plenty of extras to make up for it. Oop. And that is a beautiful pod ready to paint. And I'm just using really cheap water-based acrylic paints or like a dollar, dollar fifty at the craft store. And this is gonna be rustic. So for Santa's hat, I love a maroon color. I think that's a very rustic color. And same for his beard. This is a very creamy, old-fashioned white. And then for his face, you'll need kind of a peach fleshy tone. For his mouth, you'll need a red, I like a bright candy apple red for that. You need just the tiniest amount. And then for his eyes, same thing, a little bit of black. We're gonna start with the base layer of paint, the red hat and the white beard. And there are two different ways you can go about this. The first is to use full strength paint like it comes right out of the bottle, which is the easier way. And the second way is to water it down a little bit about equal parts paint and water. So it turns into more of like a stain, which is how I like to do it. And I'll paint one each way and show you the difference at the end. It is subtle, but I do find that when I water the paint down like this, the finished product has a little bit more depth, a little bit more artistry, and a little bit more rusticness. So even though it's a little bit more fussy, I like to do it this way. In starting with the red hat, I like to kind of imagine the milkweed pod in thirds and allocate about one third of the top for the hat. So it's kind of a curved line. I like to make my line first so I know exactly where the border is that I want, and then I'll start to fill it in. You can see the paint is starting to soak into the pod, which I really love the look of. The downside is that it will bleed. You can see there it is starting to bleed past the line that I drew. If you use the full strength paint that's not watered down, it won't bleed. This is the extra fussiness that I was talking about when using the watered down paint, but I just really love the look of it, and we will correct it in a little bit. Make sure to get all the way to the edges and around the edge a little bit, but don't paint the little bump at the top. That is going to be the ball on Santa's hat, and we'll paint that white in a little bit, so don't paint it red. After I finish the hat, I like to let this dry for about an hour, at least an hour, before I move on to the white. It's also worth mentioning that some pods bleed more than others. This one is bleeding quite a bit on this side, which is not a big deal. For Santa's beard, similar to the red paint, I am going to water this down with about equal parts water, just a little splash of water in my cup. You do need to mix this really well, make sure that there are no clumps or lumps left before you start painting. And I also haven't mentioned, I'm just using cheap brushes from the craft store. Now, when you start painting the white and you're painting it over the red, use a dabbing motion like I am here. And you can see the white is bleeding and we will fix it. It's a little bit like chasing your tail, but I really do like the look of it better. Once you get past any red bleeding and down to the lower part of the pod, you can start using brush strokes. And of course, if you're using the full strength paint, you don't have to worry about any of that. Just paint it up to the line of where the red is. Just like with the red, make sure to get all the way to the edges and a little bit over the edges. And then we're gonna let these dry for another hour. This is a project where I do it in waves and I do some and I let it dry and I come back and I do some more and I let it dry. Well, now it's time to fix all of this bleeding paint mess that we've created here. You can see this one has white bleeding into the red and this one right here, I have just color corrected with some full strength paint and you can see it's darker and it has kind of a tie-dye mottled appearance, which I really like. I'm gonna show you how I did that. 
So to correct the white bleeding into the red, all I'm going to do is come in with a little bit of a tiniest amount of full strength red paint on a very wet brush that I'm going to keep wetting and just paint over, dab over any of the white. And one thing I'm trying to be a little bit careful about because I don't, I don't want this to bleed anymore. I want to stop the bleeding. I don't want to be chasing this back and forth all day long is that when I'm really close to the white line here, I'm using full strength red paint and a little bit less wet brush. It's only when I'm higher up into the red that I'm wetting my brush heavily and that's to help preserve the mottled stain like quality of the paint. But again, trying to minimize any bleeding. Does that make sense? I think that this is a good example of a bit of the artistry that I was talking about earlier, where you kind of have to read the paint, you have to read the pod and go back and forth and figure out what you like and what's working for you. And now some white beard color correction. This is one where I corrected the red hat and now I'm gonna come in similarly and correct the white beard. I have full strength paint on a wet brush, although just like the red when I'm closer to the line here, I am using a little bit drier brush. It's only when I get lower down into the beard that I really try to keep the brush very wet to preserve the stain-like mottled quality. A couple notes I wanna make here. When I'm doing this color correction, I'm really trying to use as little paint as I can get away with. And I'm definitely liking the dabbing motion. I think that helps to, to not use a lot of paint. It's almost like you're blending it, but I definitely don't want this pink here like this pink in the beard I want to I want to cover up. So dab it, use as little paint as possible, and use as wet of a brush as you can. Keep dabbing your brush into the water to help thin the paint. And I just keep going, keep adding little bits of paint until I think it looks good. And while I've got white paint already on my brush, I'm just going to go ahead and paint the white ball on Santa's hat. This is full strength white paint. In fact, all of the paint from here on out I will use is full strength. The only one I water down is the red hat and the white beard. And the white ball on the hat can be a little bit tricky depending on how the stem came off. Some of them are a lot easier to paint than others. Like this one has a lot of kind of weird nooks and crannies. The goal is to make it look round and to not get any paint on the red, but to try to get it into all the crevices there. Next up is Santa's face. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of the peach colored paint and start to dab it on. You can actually do this when the white is still a little bit wet or when the white is fully dry. And I'm really kind of trying to blend it in here. Think of, about when you're putting makeup on your own face and kind of blending it in and you don't wanna have it too heavy. It's kind of just a blushing of color on his face. When I'm deciding how far up to take the peach color, I look at where the band of the hat would be up here and make sure that I leave a nice wide band of white between the red and the peach. And then don't take the peach too far down the beard either. You want kind of a nice sideways oval shape. And then the last thing that we'll paint on are the eyes and the mouth. It is best to let the peach paint dry at least a little bit before you attempt this. Though if you're in a hurry and you're very careful, you can do it while the other paint is still wet. You'll need a pretty small brush for this. And the one thing that I would suggest is make sure that you put the eyes kind of close together. If they get too wide set, it just doesn't look right. And when they're closer together like this, I think it has more of an old fashioned rustic look. I'm using the same little brush for the mouth. And the one thing you have to get right about the mouth is that it goes on the white. It does not go on the peach. You have to take into account Santa's mustache. So there is a thin layer of white between his face and his lips there. If you draw the mouth on the peach, it just looks like a weird cartoon character and totally changes the whole look of these Santa faces. And of course we want Santa to be smiling and to look happy. So I like to do almost a soft or kind of rounded V shape for his mouth. I think that looks best. As promised, here's what one looks like, the one on the right where I use the full strength paint compared to watered down paint for the beard and the hat. It still looks very good. It's a very nice looking ornament. I just think that the one on the left has a little bit more depth. It has maybe a little bit more of an antique look, but if you don't wanna to go to the trouble and you want this to be a super simple craft, or maybe you're working with kids, or maybe you don't have a ton of art skills, you can still make a very, very nice ornament with full strength paint. 
The last thing that we need to do is attach a hanger and I'm using raffia for this. I think it looks really nice with the Santa. They're both very rustic materials so they go good together. I've also used a thin hemp cord before and that has looked nice as well. And I always cut it a little bigger than I need so I have just a little extra to work with and it's easier to tie a knot in the end. And all you have to do is tie one simple knot and then pull it tight. And I'm aiming for the loop itself to be about like three fingers width wide. And once I have it at the size that I want, I'm just going to use the scissors to cut off the extra little ends, leaving maybe like a half inch tail on it. To glue it on, I'm using a super glue gel, but you could also use hot glue. I think a lot of other types of glue would probably work as well. And I just put a fairly big dab there right at the top and then kind of shove in the knot of my hanger into the crevice there that is the top of the milkweed pot. I'm just using a scissor so I don't get my fingers full of super glue because I hate that. This particular glue is actually not very fast drying at all, so I'm going to set these in an area where they can be undisturbed for a little while and harden. Sometimes I come in with a little extra glue while they're drying to help make them just a little bit more secure. I also wanted to point out here, you'll probably notice that in some of the pods I have left in the center strip that holds the seeds in, and some of them I've taken it out. You can do whichever you like. They, they kind of want to follow it on their own but I also find that they make gluing the hanger in just a little bit easier, so whichever you like. And that's it. Once the glue is dry, they are ready to hang on the tree, and they are ready for gifting. Let me know if you have any questions, and if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.